Aloha, and welcome to It's All About the Keiki. My name is Christine Altwies, and with me today is a super special, very important guest, Craig Petty. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Craig is the VP of Strategic Partnerships for Blue Zones Hawaii and ShareCare. Did I get that yes, right? You did. Very okay. good. Great. So most people watching probably don't know what Blue Zones and ShareCare are. Um, I know Blue Zones because when I first heard about it, a year or so ago, it made me really excited because it felt like it's about time that we're looking at the aging process and how to be healthier. So that's one of the things you do. The other thing is the share care program. Um, so why don't we just have you give us a few minutes of introduction about each of those, the blue zones and the share care, and then I'm going to get us to what I really want to talk about today, which is healthy children. That's great. Well, okay. first, thank you so much for, for having me. I'm thrilled to be here talking about subjects that are super passionate to me and that I love and am thrilled that I get to wake up every single day mm -hmm. and work with people to try to help them right. live a healthier, happier yeah. life. Blue Zones Project it was brought to Hawaii by HMSA mm -hmm. a couple of years ago um, based on research by Dan Butner, who's a National Geographic researcher and fellow, right. um, brought to Hawaii to try to help create a healthier community for everybody in Hawaii right. across the state. And so it, it, as I mentioned, it's based on Dan's research mm -hmm. and he found places in the world that produced the highest percentage of centenarians. Mm -hmm. uh, so not, did, but not only did they just live to be a hundred years, but they lived to be a hundred years almost free of chronic conditions, chronic right. disease. Which so, is the key. Which is the key. So okay. they, they lived a good long right. life. Not just a long life, but a good long life. Right. He took all the research from these five places mm -hmm. and then brought them together into Blue Zones Project. And we are taking Blue Zones Project, all the, that research and those learnings, to implement those things in communities here in Hawaii and across the country. We've got about 49 communities Great. throughout the, the U.S. Right. And um, Hawaii is our favorite. Blue because Project Hawaii community. is great and it's, it's an ideal it's place great. to be healthy, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's Blue Zones Project, share care, digital health um, engagement uh, technology platform. Right. Works very closely with Blue Zones mm -hmm. um, and allows us to be able to help individuals uh, in more of a digital way, right. provide access to content, right. to help information. And one of the most important things that also is you know very much a part of Blue Zones Project is helping people understand what their real age is. Mm. So when we talk about blue zones, we're talking about living longer, healthier lives. Okay. We gotta know where we're at. So right. we all know, I know my birthday, I know how old I am, you know how old you are and what right. your birthday is, but do you know how old your body really is? Right, because age is just a number. Age and I'm actually much younger than I exactly. am. Right. So we have a, a survey through ShareCare in our app, it's free for everybody. You take this real age survey right. and it tells you what the real age of your body is, not your calendar age. Right. And then it helps you to make changes so you can live that longer, healthier life. And then Blue Zones Project together with ShareCare, we're out in the community helping people to then make that actually happen in the communities that, that we live in. And I have to be careful to keep us on track today because I find this so endlessly fascinating and really important and exciting as a topic in general, but the blue zones in particular, I love the idea that the things that make us live the longest and the most healthy way is stuff that to me is all no-brainer stuff. Can we just tick off, is that a thing? Can we Absolutely. tick off what like the five top elements to good living are that keep you healthier longer? And then we're gonna move to talking about cakey. So. Yes, so I think what's interesting too is when you know I first started learning about blue zones and we talk about this subject, People think, you know, I got to be exercising, I got to, you know, do all these different things. And it's, it goes much further than that. Right. And, you know, when, we, when Dan looked at these places where people lived the longest, um, uh, he found that they weren't going to the gym, gym and pumping right. iron. They, they were doing things that the environment that they lived in 
helped nudge them into moving naturally. So that's one of them. Right. Moving naturally right. is one of those key things. And so can I go garden? Do I walk to the grocery store? Right. Do I move, you know, am I moving naturally? Um, another one, is, and we were talking about this earlier, is the social network, right. the people who are around you. Do you have friends who nudge you, who influence you in a positive way mm -hmm. to make healthier choices? Mm -hmm. That person that you might go running with one day instead of mm -hmm. running four, we're going to go run ten, mm -hmm. you know, or you know, maybe not quite that extreme. Right. Jennifer. But you do have that social mm -hmm. network yes. that's going to help you. Right. Um, Another one is around how we eat. Mm -hmm. You know, clearly, you know, we we know that um, we need to eat healthy. Right. But having access to healthy fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. one of the great things about Hawaii is, you know, we can grow things in our backyards or in the neighborhood community garden. Um, but having access to those uh, those vegetables, so blue zones um, communities eat a primarily a plant slant diet, mm -hmm. so mostly plants. And then the last one that I would say is um, to focus on is is around purpose. Mm -hmm. you know, why do you why do we get up every day? Mm -hmm. Do we have a purpose mm -hmm. for waking up in the morning? Mm -hmm. Whether that's our kids, whether that's um, you know some something greater than ourselves that really get us up, that mm -hmm. gives us meaning and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. All these blue zones communities, these five people could wake up and they could say exactly why it was that they were waking up. Mm -hmm. So those I are a couple that. of the, the key things for mm -hmm. Blue Zones Project. And what I love about it is it's so basic. It's so yeah. elemental. It's so rooted in how man and women have lived since the dawn of time. Like none of this is newfangled stuff that requires technology or, you know, access to anything that is outside of the average human's daily life, right? I mean, this is stuff we have access to. We don't have to go out and reinvent the wheel. We just have to know how to harness the resources to get ourselves to a happy old age, which is what it's about, right? Exactly. So I love that. I love that we're starting Blue Zone communities in Hawaii, which I assume means that actual communities are coming together to create healthier citizens. Love that. I noticed in Foodland the other day, there's like a Blue, Zans shop, Blue Zones shopping aisle where they had like actual blue zone official mm. food items for sale. It, so this is one of my favorites. Yeah. And and because um I'm a parent, I have three kids mm -hmm. and you know, if you've ever gone to the grocery store with your kids, mm -hmm. when you go through the checkout lane, the first thing that they always reach for and go for is what? Mm -hmm. Candy. The candy bar, mm -hmm. the junk. Mm -hmm. So what we've done in partnership with Foodland, they've been such a great partner um, throughout the state. KTA on the Big Island mm -hmm. has been excellent to work with and other grocery stores as well, is they create this Blue Zones checkout lane where you have water, you have granola bars, you have mm -hmm. nuts, you have fresh Bananas, cut fruit, yeah. you have you know healthy choices, mm -hmm. water. Um, so that again, it's all about making that easy choice or the healthy choice that easy choice. Right. So instead of going for the candy bar, right. I go for a banana or yeah. some watermelon. Love something it. Something that's good. So those strategic partnerships are what you're kind of working on specifically, which is yeah, great. Yeah, we have a team that yeah. works with them, and um, it's it, you know, we couldn't do this work, we couldn't have the transformation in these communities without the work, without the support of excellent partners throughout the community. Right. And as we were talking before we started shooting, Hawaii is a no-brainer for healthy living because we don't have huge eight-lane highways dominating the landscape. You know, we've got lots of little communities. We've got this incredible nature, which is literally everywhere you look. You can hike in a mountain. You can swim at the beach. You can go for a walk. So there's really, not to say no excuse, because I understand some people are very busy and have uh, demands on them, but it, it, it certainly is easier to live a healthy lifestyle and have access to the beautiful produce that we have here. So shifting that to the keiki, which is the point of our discussion yeah. today, and as a dad, I'm happy to hear you're, you're thinking about this. How do we raise the, the blue zone adults of the future with our keiki today? What, what are you looking at that, that makes a difference to keiki today? So I think there's a couple different things, and um, you know, me having three kids, you know, I, as, you know, separate from blue zones, just as a father, mm -hmm. I feel it's partly my responsibility to help teach my children and raise them and, and teach them how to make good choices. Mm -hmm. um, so I think first thing is parents, we need to take some accountability mm -hmm. and we need to take responsibility to, to help ensure that our kids get taught certain things. Mm -hmm. 
Secondly is Blue Zones Project, you know, one of the areas that we focus on a lot and work with in the communities where we're in are with schools. Mm. You know, my kids go to school every day and they're, they're at school for eight hours or so. Mm -hmm. And kids are in such a great way able to be taught and they're, they're teachable. Yes. And the more we can help teach them some of these good habits and uh, to make good choices, the better that they will be to be successful when they're older, when it comes to you know, health and well-being. And mm -hmm. so we focus in a number of different areas with schools mm -hmm. to help them um, be able to make those healthy choices. And, and the other thing that I really love about schools is it's not, it is all about, it is about the cakey, mm -hmm. but it's also about our teachers and mm -hmm. the staff that are there caring for these kids. And modeling good behavior. And modeling right. good behavior. Mm -hmm. And so if we can help create this environment for the teachers, that they can also be at their best, be healthier, be happier. They're gonna teach our kids better. Mm -hmm. We give our kids these opportunities to make healthier choices and mm -hmm. better. Um, and it's, it's just a great just recipe for so much success right. in an area that kids spend so much time. Because one of the scary things as a parent is that, you know, I often say I'm, a, I'm kind of a I'm a food dictator at home without creating, you know, over body awareness, creating the idea that you have to give your body good fuel because, you know, you don't want to put junk in the engine, otherwise, you know, the car won't go so well. So, you know, there's sort of this fine line between creating kids who are overly body conscious but also making healthy choices. But, you know, the school seems to me like a great place to start because, as you said, so much time is spent at school and so much of their nutrition comes from what they consume at school. So are the Blue Zones partnerships looking at targeting the public schools, for example? Are you working with the public schools? And Yeah, absolutely. So we, we're currently working in, I think it's around 90 schools throughout the state. Great. Um, across you know, all the state and our eight Blue Zones communities. Mm -hmm. And we work with the schools to make some of these changes and implement these at the school and then also um, with the teachers and for the students. Mm -hmm. A couple of the areas that we focus a lot on are getting kids active. Mm. So when I think back, way back to when I was in elementary school, and I think, how did I get to school? How did you get to school? Did you walk? Were you I one walked. of those lucky walkers? I walked. Oh, you're so, so lucky. So about yeah. 30 years ago, 60% yeah. of kids within a two mile radius mm -hmm. walked to school. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to get some energy out. They show up to school a little bit more focused, mm -hmm. ready to learn. Mm -hmm. You typically walk to school, at least when I was a kid, I walked to school with a friend. Mm -hmm. So I've got this, I'm starting to create this social network. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're, you're better, you're ready to learn and yeah. it's just a better environment. For oh, you. it makes so much so sense. So today, yeah. you know, 30 years later, only about 15% of kids are walking mm -hmm. to school. And so we do a lot with um, every year, October is this national walk to school month. Mm -hmm. And so we try to partner with our schools here mm -hmm. in our communities mm -hmm. to, to create awareness around mm -hmm. getting kids moving. And so we do walking school buses. We did some in Maui, mm -hmm. Wahiwa, uh, the Big Island, all over. And it's so fun because the kids come out, the parents come out, the mm -hmm. community comes out mm -hmm. to encourage these kids to yeah. To walk to school move and, and it's bit, a great yeah. thing so helping them to move uh, move more mm -hmm. the second one um, is not so much blue zones project um, that we are doing it but we are working and, and we every chance we can we try to find local uh, organizations in the community that are working with schools so one of my favorite um, organizations is uh, Kokua Hawaii right. Foundation I knew you were say that. and the the Ina in yeah, Schools so program yeah. it is so great, and we great. recently were doing a, um, an event at uh, Waikiki Elementary School mm -hmm. and filming some of the kids that were, they were doing their garden class. And the smiles on these kids' faces when they've got their hands in the dirt, mm -hmm. they are being taught about growing these vegetables, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then they go to another little area and they actually eat what it is that they're growing. Mm -hmm. It's so great, mm -hmm. and that's how you these kids you, they start to learn about right. this, and they then they they want to go home, and they want to do it at home, mm -hmm. and they tell their parents about it. Right. So it's it's great. I'll never forget when I was twelve. I think I had a no smoking, you know, lecture at school, and I came home and I was like, Dad, you've got to quit smoking, and he did, and it gave me such an amazing feeling of 
you know, oh, my voice counts, and, you know, for the whole family it was a great thing, and sort of what I had learned, I came home and shared with the family. And I see that in a lot of my, you know, my children's friends and in other families that we know, where what the kids are learning at school, they're so eager to bring it home and share it with their parents, especially if it results in them telling their parents that their parents are doing something wrong, and here's how you can do it better mom and dad like here's how we recycle or here's how we should be eating so that's really exciting to hear that they're they're doing that and kids love to be productive right like this is developmentally the stage when they're in elementary school where they need to feel like what they're doing is meaningful work so anything you can give them that relates to gardening or healthy food choices i imagine would really stick with them right yeah and you know they they work in the garden then they start to learn how to cook in the kitchen Mm -hmm. and you now you start to spend quality time with your kids cooking healthy food Mm -hmm. or you spend quality time with your kids out gardening in your garden Mm -hmm. or going out for walks or you know bike rides things like that it's Mm -hmm. you know it's it's translating into better time better quality time with your kids which Mm -hmm. is so powerful that's amazing so blue zones even though it started out as sort of a longevity study quickly has turned to how do we make sure that the older population is there to be healthy we got to start when they're younger right and that's a that's a focused initiative that you all are doing yeah it's focused because we we look at um, there's a few key areas that we work in we work with people individuals in the community whether they're cakey or adults we work with um, places mm-hmm. so the places that we work the places where we go grocery shopping the restaurants that we eat in Mm-hmm. and um, maybe where we have a faith-based organization or some other local community mm-hmm. um, organization that we belong to. And then we work with policy. Mm-hmm. What are the policies that we can maybe help to make better mm-hmm. so that it creates this l- sustainable mm-hmm. Hawaii and this environment mm-hmm. where um, our kids, our kapuna, everybody can live a healthier, happier life. Mm-hmm. And so those are the three, the three kind of focus areas that we, we, we work in. And schools definitely play a, a role in the places in helping to transform that environment that makes it uh, the healthy choice, the easy choice. Yeah. So how do we, for example, I mean, I, I don't know how we can talk about this without getting into a sticky zone, but, you know, when you look at the prevalence of vending machines in schools or, you know, I know that as a healthy eater, it often takes me a lot more energy and time to seek out good food choices. You know, if I'm on the road, for example, it's a lot harder to find what I need to eat because I'm a vegan. Um, As a vegan, that's going to sustain me because, you know, cheap carbs and sugar and fat are in almost everything that you can grab easily. Um, There aren't vegetable vending machines, you know, those would be weird. Um, So how is the Blue Zone sort of working to gently counter the huge presence of cheap bad food in our kids lives yeah so we you know there's a couple different things that we do and um, when it comes to you know schools and you know most schools you know my at least my kids they can't go to the vending machines and you know buy anything which is great Um, but if there are vending machines especially for like the teachers we work with the schools to try to find healthier options to Mm -hmm. put in those um, and then another thing that we do with schools is one of the greatest things about a kid and in, in every year they have their birthday and they want to come celebrate mm-hmm. with their classmates and bring a treat. And, right. and that's great. Yeah. And, you know, we don't want to take that away. But can we do a class celebration each month mm-hmm. where instead of a, a cupcake or cookie every single day for each kid that has their birthday, maybe we just have one celebration during the month oh. so that so the July birthdays or the October birthdays are all celebrated on one day we're gonna do it on one day uh-huh. and rather than doing it on a whole bunch of different days and having treats that you know perhaps we don't want our kids to have all the time so that's right that's one suggestion but then it's also just making the the healthier choices more accessible so mm-hmm. a lot of schools are doing school gardens mm-hmm. um, so making it so that they can maybe they can go and garden there at the school and they can take vegetables with them mm. sometimes we bring a farmers market mm-hmm. to a school or to a local community mm-hmm. where people can go and, and have access to those things and we do a lot of this as well with work sites mm. work sites are bringing uh, farmers markets to the work site so their employees can go and get uh, you know have um, access to these healthy foods right. 
A lot of it is really just, it's around, it's education and helping us find what are those things that I can, that I can access w if I'm on a go right. and, and be able to, um, to get, you know, easily. Right. But it's not, it's not easy. It, it, it takes a lot of work. And it's about sort of shifting our whole mindset, right? Like as a culture and as a society, we tend to be all about convenience mm -hmm. and all about cost. Somebody told me, I'll never forget, we were eating at a local restaurant that's well known and loved for good reason and they have mostly organic foods and you know the sizes of the portions are a little smaller and the prices are a little higher and um, you know you pay for the high quality locally produced food and we should actually when we can afford to do so I think do so as a vote of confidence you know as a way of supporting the local economy and the local organic food yeah. Deal, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's interesting that you you bring that up because <clears throat> a lot of times, you know, restaurants think that for me to serve healthier choices, it's going to cost me a lot more. Mm -hmm. It's going to it's going to impact my bottom line. And um, we work with restaurants mm -hmm. to try to encourage them to put healthier choices on there, make the default choice the healthier choice. So mm -hmm. I'll give you two two quick examples. Mm -hmm. um, Lots of restaurants, when you go and sit down, one of the first things they do is they bring out a bowl of rolls or bread. Mm -hmm. And we eat it. Mm -hmm. So default, I'm not gonna bring that out. If you want some bread and you ask for it, we'll bring some out. So now you, you automatically, rather than putting food out there that may go to waste or, or mm -hmm. is costing you more money, you don't do it. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is um, side dishes on our food. You know, we all usually get a, a sandwich and we get fries. Mm -hmm. Don't make that the default. Make it a little cup of fruit mm -hmm. or make it a half portion size so that somebody has an, a better choice to order a half size sandwich with mm -hmm. some fruit versus mm -hmm. a full size sandwich uh, mm -hmm. with some fruit. Mm -hmm. And actually their cost goes down. So right. they can actually get, uh, have a better um, bottom line mm -hmm. by making these healthy choices easier. Right. And then they're helping people live healthier. That, I never would have thought of that, but you're right. I mean, we, if it's put in front of us, we'll eat it, whether we want it or not. And then by the time our healthy salad arrives, we're kind of too full to eat it, maybe, or, yeah. Yep. Okay. And obviously, you know, HMSA, Share Care Blue Zones, like there is a bottom line benefit here to large companies, right? There's a reason why large corporations um, are helped through offering health programs to their employees, because you have healthier employees who work better, take more less time off because they're sick less often. Um, as an insurance provider, as a health care provider, HMSA understands that creating blue zone communities results in a healthier population, which results in a better company. HMSA is paying out fewer payouts because you got healthier population, right? Yeah. So there's definitely a win-win. Definitely, it's a win-win. And really, I'd say it's, it's very much about the community. I mean, mm. Ultimately, we all want to create this healthier environment mm -hmm. for us to live, work, mm -hmm. and play. Mm -hmm. HMSA, absolutely, they have um, a great role and opportunity to help do that. And I think that's, that's why they saw what they saw in Blue Zones. Mm -hmm. We could help create, help support them in their long time mission of creating this healthier community. Right. Um, and we are, when we're, when we're healthy, we're happier. Mm -hmm. I go to work. I'm happier. Mm -hmm. I um, handle customers better when mm -hmm. I'm happier. Mm -hmm. Bottom line of the organization is better, mm -hmm. and it's it's a win-win for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we we may not see that return year one, mm -hmm. but long term we're going to see the benefits for many, many, many more years to right. come by creating these healthier environments for our, for our community. Yeah, it's kind of it's a, it's the easiest argument in the world to make for anybody. Okay, so we're almost out of time. We've got a few minutes left. Your final thoughts, uh, wishes for people, suggestions, things that make you super excited about this. What do you have for us? So, I, so a couple things. One is um, it's, it's not hard. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. But you just need to start. Right. So a lot of times people are like, I, you know, I, can't, I can't do this because of... Um, you know, I'm so overweight and I've got so much to lose. You just got to get started. Right. And, and so we're there to help you get started, mm -hmm. whether it's come walk with us, you know, or come, come to a uh, cooking demo, you know, right. just anything, just get started. 
Okay. It's that first step is sometimes the hardest step. Right. Um, find your why. Find your purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, is it your kids? Is it your grandkids? Mm -hmm. you know, who is it? Mm -hmm. And and let that be some of the motivating factor for what gets you out mm -hmm. and gets you to do stuff. And then third is get involved. Mm -hmm. You know, when we get involved in our community, we we develop this sense of pride. And that's what I love about Hawaii is there's so much pride mm -hmm. of what we have here, which is mm -hmm. so great. But get out. Mm -hmm. Go go help your community. Do some good things. So those three things. That's what I would hope that everybody would do. Right. Um, Blue Zones Project, Share Care, HMSA, we're here to help you do that. Mm -hmm. You can come to anything. It's free. Let us come. Let us be together and, and help create this healthier community that we're all striving for. I love that. And so they just would go to the website, HMSA, if they don't know where to start, just plug into HMSA.org. Yeah, HMSA.com. You okay. can find some Blue Zones information there or Hawaii.BlueZonesProject.com. Okay is where um, you can get a lot of information. You can sign up for the newsletter. Right. Um, you can download ShareCare. You're going to get you know, information about Blue Zones Project. You okay. can learn your real age, okay. uh, which is a, a big first step. I am so there's a lot of that. places. You've got to right. do it. You've got to do it. Yeah. I'm going to figure out how I'm actually 29. I've known it all along. I've been saying it for years. There you go. I'm sure I will have that verified for me. You then. will. Okay. Well, I appreciate you coming Thank in. You. I know you're a busy working dad, so thanks for your time and for sharing all this inspirational information. I think you've probably influenced a lot of people today by sharing this. So thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Thank you. This has been It's All About the Cakey. I'm Christine Altwe. Special thanks today to my very wonderful guest, Craig Petty. Uh, VP of Strategic Partnerships with Blue Zones Hawaii and ShareCare. Thanks to Olelo Media Communications and to my wonderful director, Patrick Taylor. Until next time, aloha.